Our next speaker will be Dr. James Ashram. Dr. James has uh, published over 30 peer-reviewed articles and numerous books, and his topic is very interesting to many of us. It's a newer topic in energy medicine. Dr. Ashram. Thank you. Well, this is delightful to be with you today. When I look back over the history of medicine, there are periods when things stay pretty much the same and then there are great breakthroughs. Um, The germ theory of disease, it's amazing to think that at the time of the Civil War, the physicians didn't know what infection was. And we've had vaccination and we've had the discovery of the HIV virus, and we've had the development of trauma medicine, milestones in the history of medicine, and I think another milestone is upon us, and it is the advent of energy medicine. For some people, energy medicine is an uncomfortable term, and it is often said that there's no scientific basis for energy medicine and my life is about demonstrating that that's not true. There is an adequate and abundant, rich um, basis for energy medicine, and my prediction is that energy medicine will increasingly become a major aspect of anti-aging medicine. I thank the uh, conference organizers and OnDemed for getting me here, and I thank all of you for coming. I'm talking about matrix energetics and regeneration, regeneration being an important aspect of anti-aging medicine. So what is energy medicine? First, what is energy? There's a lot of confusion about energy, and that's why I have to go through this little process. If you look up energy in a medical textbook, you'll find virtually nothing, in spite of the fact that there's been an enormous amount of electrophysiological and physiological research on energy over the years. So in physics, energy is defined as the ability to do work. And we've all had the experience of just not feeling like it, not having any energy. So the physics definition is good. And physics gives us a precise language so that we can talk about various aspects of medicine and biomedicine Um, with a common language. Nothing happens in nature without an energy exchange. Communication or acquisition of knowledge of any kind occurs only with an energy transfer. There are no exceptions. This is a rule of nature. Light can do the work of shifting the conformation of pigments in your eye so that you can see me. Gravity does the work of breaking your leg when you fall off your bicycle or landing on your head, as we just heard in the last talk. Uh, Sound vibrates the little hair cells in your cochlea so that you can hear my voice. The hair cells in the olfactory epithelium pick up the vibrations of odor molecules so that you can smell. Heat can do the work of frying your eggs. The chemical energy from breakfast can operate your nerves and muscles. So energy is basic to everything we do. It's our whole experience of life, of the world around us and the world within us. Touching the body produces electricity. This is called the piezoelectric effect or pressure electricity. The biomagnetic field of your body induces current flows in the uh, tissues of people near you. And here's a wonderful article that documents that when people are in proximity within 18 inches, the electrocardiogram of one patient, of one person, will show up in the brain waves of the other. So if you're sitting next to someone, know that you are interacting biomagnetically, whether you know it or not. So energy medicine includes a whole range of hands-on methods, hands-off methods, uh, energy techniques, and devices. 
the the hands-on methods range from acupuncture to zero balancing, uh, chiropractic, cranial sacral, osteopathy, and so on. Um, these techniques are increasingly popular. They are what what is happening where I sit and what I really enjoy is the fact that I interface with all of these different therapies. I've, I've taught and given workshops at virtually all of these complementary and alternative therapy schools and I also am very interested in devices. And these two worlds are combining to create a very rich theoretical base and a very rapid um, sequence of transitions in medicine to the point where some of these methods, which are regarded by some patients as a last resort when their doctor says, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do for you, as a last resort, they try something weird like acupuncture, and it works, and they get very happy, and they tell their friends, and the news, good news travels fast, and now I think there are something like 1,800 medical doctors who have joined the American Academy of Medical Acupuncture and learned acupuncture, and some of you are probably in that category. So there's this very interesting interplay between the hands-on people who are very attuned to touch and what's happening in their patients and what happens when a device is brought along that they can use for their patients that they're having trouble with. And those are the most interesting patients. Those are the ones that the future of medicine depends on. So we can define energy medicine. It's the diagnostic and therapeutic use of energy. And these are ordinary energies. There's nothing mythical here. Heat, light, sound, gravity, pressure, vibration, electricity, magnetism, chemical energy, electromagnetism, the basic forces that surround and interpenetrate us. Whether these energies are produced by or detected by a medical device or by the human body. And energy me medicine recognizes that the body uses various forms of energy in its communications and its regulations. And these are important. Most of the disorders that bring people to you are regulatory disorders. And in fact, most of the disorders can be described energetically. And in a way, this has been kind of a blind spot in medicine because some conditions are truly, basically, disturbances in the energetics of a person and we haven't had a language to talk about that and we don't know much about that. So energy medicine involves all, um, energy of particular frequencies and intensities and wave shapes and other characteristics that stimulate the repair and regeneration of one or more tissues. So that's my definition. My topic, matrix energetics and regulation, regeneration. Spontaneous healing. Andrew Weil wrote a book published in 1995, Spontaneous Healing. He described the fascinating subject of uh, spontaneous healing Every now and then, doctors notice that a patient suddenly gets better. They may be hopelessly ill or hopelessly injured, and in a very short time, a, a ridiculously short amount of time, they suddenly and unexpectedly get better. We would like to know how that happens. We would like to be able to trigger spontaneous healing at will, wouldn't we? So the key phrase in the whole book and from my perspective, Andrew Weil said, all the circuitry and machinery is there. The problem is simply to discover how to turn on the right switches to activate the process. And many of you hit the right switches from time to time and are startled by how quickly someone recovers, much faster than you would expect. In my opinion, the research on energy medicine tells us what the circuitry is and where the switches are and, and what the process is. And that's another lecture, but I think we have about figured this out. 
Interesting in relation to spontaneous healing, I have a friend, uh, Deb. She had uh, very serious cancer. She um, joined a study of a new drug with 20 women in it. The other 19 women died. She had very severe tumors. Uh, she went to surgery to have her brain tumors removed. And strangely, the surgeon came into the room and he fainted. This is not common, but surgery canceled. And a few days later, Deb was minding her own business, and suddenly she had this sensation go through her whole body. It took less than a second, something like this. Bloop. She knew from the sensation that her cancer was gone. She went back to her oncologist. He checked her out. He said, I don't know what you did, but it's gone. You don't have to see me anymore. Now that's spontaneous healing, rare, wonderful, wonderful when it happens. The noetic sciences people are doing a project, the remission project. And this uh, study is available on the web. You can download it from noetic sciences for free. A large database of um, spontaneous remission from around the world, thousands of references, hundreds of journals, many different languages. Uh, if you're as fascinated with this subject as I am, you can go to noetic.org and see their work. For silly reasons, we've left energetics out of our medicine. When we ignore energy, we miss 99% of reality. In fact, this little bit that peeks through, I'm not even sure it exists. Because what can you comprehend about anything without energetics? When we leave energy out of our biomedicine, we miss a vast amount of our healing potential. And we've been wearing blinders. We've been using tunnel vision for 100 years. So I want to open up the examination of energy medicine and energetics. And I'll talk first about the matrix. Um, matrix is a concept that helps us understand many aspects of energetics. Here I'm talking about in the center of each of these cells is the nucleus with its nuclear matrix and the genetic material. The nuclear matrix is surrounded by the cytoskeleton, which is encompassed by the cell membrane. And what I'm talking about with the matrix is this whole system that interconnects across the cell membrane to the extracellular fabric which connects to the connective tissue and connects throughout the body. And this is a concept that can help us understand many things that seem mysterious. It gives us a conceptual substrate for communication. There's another kind of communication going on in the body it's not the nervous system. It's an older system than the nervous system. It goes back much further in evolution. The nervous system is actually made of this matrix. It's embedded in this matrix. And this matrix has the ability to communicate. We catch glimpses of this from time to time uh, when strange things happen. And it is the basis for a lot of energy medicine. It gives us a precise science for the controversial term holistic. The problem with the term holistic, I think, is that it forces us to think in a multidisciplinary fashion. And we have our favorite disciplines, and we don't want to do that. So to look at holistic aspects of functioning, we really have to take the blinders off and look around at all the way ways that different systems interact with each other. Matrix helps us understand the diagnostic and treatment capabilities of energy medicine hands-on and devices, such as the Ondamed and many others. Why have we missed this perspective? Why is this not part of our regular medicine? Well, here's one of the confusions, and there's my, my colleague Tweety Bird who comes on to point out when something is baloney. And 
This image of the cell as a bag full of solution with some stuff floating around it, and then in the upper left is the extracellular matrix and connective tissue off somewhere else, this is wrong. Not only is this wrong, this seriously confuses us. This is in every textbook. This is what we begin with when we start to study the body. We learn the structure of the cell and we get an incorrect image. We have this uh, idea of life being chemicals diffusing around. And this is a random process. Signals are molecular. They diffuse from place to place, from the place where they're produced to receptors. This is a slow process. It happens, but it's only part of what's going on in the living system. Biochemistry and pharmacolog pharmacology are rate limited by diffusion, diffusion random walks of molecules. So this cell, which is represented as a bag full of solution in every textbook, is inaccurate and it keeps us confused. Here's a model of a cell in a book. I can get $25 off in shipping and handling if I buy this book on the cell, new book on the cell. Why would I buy this book when it has a totally inaccurate and confusing picture of the cell. It's wrong. Here's what's going on. Here is an example of a metabolic pathway we're all familiar with, glycolysis. You're all, all the cells in your bodies are doing glycolysis right now, converting glucose to pyruvate through a series of steps. And the bag model, which is what we learn in biochemistry, is diffusion-based. Uh, it's a random walk through the cell. The glucose molecule comes into the cell, and I call it the drunken sailor model. It staggers around looking for the first enzyme so it can get converted from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. So here it is. I made this up so that you can see the story. Here's glycolysis. Here comes glucose into the cell. It's diffusing. It hits enzyme 1. It gets phosphorylated, and it keeps on going from place to place, randomly bumping around until it reaches enzyme 2, and so on, and so on, and so on. If this were the way metabolism worked, it would take 10,000 years for you to digest your breakfast. This is obviously impossible and is not the way it is. Now, where are we? Have we gotten to 10 yet? There it comes, nine, ten, pyruvate, whoopee. I copyrighted this slide because it took a whole day to make it. When in fact, glycolysis probably happens in a femtosecond. How can I say such a thing? Well, my introduction to all of this was from Albert Sengergi, who received the Nobel Prize in 1937, discovered actomyosin, laid the foundation for modern research on muscle, the biochemistry of muscle contraction. And then he did something completely new, and everybody knew, knew that he was crazy. This is what happens with real breakthroughs in science. The real peculiar thing in science is that science depends on new ideas, and scientists hate new ideas. It's amazing. It happens all the time. And he was on the right track with electronic biology, but this was not recognized until very recently. He said this, Life is too rapid and subtle to be explained by slow-moving chemical reactions and nerve impulses. So chemical reactions and nerve impulses happen, but there are other things going on that are much faster. The proteins, he said, are the stage upon which the drama of life unfolds. And the actors can be none other than small and highly mobile units such as electrons and protons. They can move very rapidly. For example, there are free electrons in the body. They come from the double bonds in the protein backbone. These are delocalized de electrons that can move about in the fabric of the body. 
This is a communication system. So here's a more realistic view of metabolism and cell structure. The enzymes are located on the matrix. They're like assembly lines in an automobile factory. And the glucose comes in from the left, and it bumps into the first enzyme and brrr, pops out. The pyruvate pops out the other side. Biochemists Biochem have known this for a long time. They're called metabolons. They're units. This is from 1985. A lot of the information I give about energy medicine is old. That doesn't mean it's wrong. It's very good information. It's just, a lot of it has just not been given sort of there isn't real structure to integrate it into uh, biomedicine, and that's changing. So here's, here's the matrix with the 10 enzymes of glycolysis, and there's the glycolytic process, and it is very fast. Um, it is as fast as a rifle bullet, a thousand meters per second. Now well, that's an extraordinary statement. If you want to see where it comes from, read the Nobel Prize lecture of Ahmed Zewal from uh, 1999, Nobel Prize in Chemistry. He developed femtosecond spectroscopy, which enabled him to take pictures, laser flash pictures, of molecules interacting with each other. And metabolic reactions are extremely rapid. And Tensions and voltages on the matrix affect biochemistry. And this is a base, one of the explanations for how some of these uh, energy medicine devices are able to interact with biochemical processes taking place in the body without having to take a pill. So there are two models, and the bag model is a vectoral flow a diffusion, random process, it's slow. Diffusion is slow, and, and in the matrix model, uh, energy moves vectorally very much faster, much more efficient, not rate limited by diffusion. And the signals can be virtually instantaneous, and this again is why some of these devices can produce changes in the body that can be dramatic very quickly. So here's the race, vectoral flow versus diffusion. See who won. A profound discovery that made all of this matrix concept possible is the discovery of the integrins that extend across the cell membrane. And I've circled them in red here. This is very profound, I think, very important discovery in the history of of cell biology. And these links across the cell surface are energetic and mechanical links. They were discovered by Mark Brecher at Cambridge in England. He was studying a protein that is in the membrane of the red blood cell. Does it stick to the surface, is on the left? Does it stick into the membrane? Does it stick way into the membrane? Or does it go all the way across? Well, using radioactive labeling, he discovered that spectrum extends all the way across the membrane of the red cell. Of course, his colleagues immediately knew that he had lost his marbles. But it turns out he was right. And we now know that there are many proteins that look like this, that go back and forth across the cell membrane seven times. A lot of sensory receptors are like this. Uh, here's a quote. I've give you, given you Brecher's article and also a quote from Scientific American. Discovered only recently, these adhesive cell surface molecules have quickly uh, revealed themselves to be critical to proper functioning of the body and to life itself. Uh, they weren't discovered recently. They were discovered many years before. I like to correct people when they failed to cite the literature that uh, backs up what they're saying. The integrins link the cellular matrix and the nuclear matrix with the extracellular matrix and all of the connective tissues, tendon, ligament, fascia, 
cartilage, bone, the fiber system in bone, the superficial fascia. Uh, when you interrogate the matrix, you can interrogate the entire organism, including all of the tissues, all of the cells, and the genetic material. When you energize the matrix, you can influence the entire organism, including all of the tissue cells and the genetic material. And energy medicine devices are being developed. A whole uh, group of these devices are being developed that can, in a very short time, do a very sophisticated interrogation of the matrix and determine where imbalances are and correct them. And these devices, such as the Ondamed, are thrilling to the patient and to the practitioner who uses them. Uh, they are dealing with situations that in the past have been very problematic. All of the organs and all the parts of the body are included in the matrix. The little blue cells are what I call the pericells. Peri means around. The cells around the gut, the cells around the nerves, the cells around the muscles and the bones, the periosteum, um, the cells around the muscles and the cells of the skin. These are the cells that have to coordinate their activities if regeneration is going to occur. If you have a complicated injury or wound involving many different cell types, these cell types, these are the cells that do the regeneration, the repair, replacement, and they have to talk to each other. And it's the matrix that makes this possible. So I call it the living matrix. It's the material and energetic substrate for communications that integrate and coordinate cell activities involved in the healing of injuries. And that includes chemical communications as well. And the modern technologies are able to facilitate this communication by opening up the matrix communication. The matrix is an excitable medium. When a signal is generated in one part, it moves from place to place, from cell to cell, and from cell into the connective tissue extracellular matrix. So cells are generating signals that travel through the body, and they are listening to signals generated elsewhere. It's a medium for cell migrations. Its quality determines how well cells can migrate. And here are cells moving along the matrix. The quality of the matrix determines the ability of the organism to communicate with the different parts, chemical, electronic, protonic, and so on, and is opened up by various energy medicine devices. The matrix can get clogged with toxins and this inhibits communication. Drugs, lotions, solvents, pesticides, viral fragments, mercury from fillings, detergents, other household chemicals, all of these, it's like you can have a buildup of these things and you're okay and you feel fine. It's like filling the bucket. And when the bucket is full, problems begin. And these devices can help with a detoxification problem. I got a little ahead of myself there. Um, toxins are mechanically trapped in the matrix. They can bind to charges. The matrix is predominantly negatively charged. So positively charged molecules will get stuck to charges. And then there's hydrophobic and hydrophilic binding. And the matrix, the gel part of the matrix, is a polymer, and toxins can get trapped in the polymer. Um, I'll give you an example that will make you remember what a polymer is. Polymer may be a, a, uh, composed of many things. Think of politics, poly, many, ticks, blood-sucking bugs, <laughs> politics. So the matrix is a polymer. We get politics in here, don't we? 
last talk did. So very tiny, the situation is that very tiny electrical or magnetic or thermal effects can cause the matrix to fall apart. The polymers depolymerize into their constituent monomers and the toxins are released. And within a few minutes, the whole network repolymerizes um, and is now open and free of toxins. And this can happen with a subtle input of energy, such as is provided in an energy medicine device such as the Ondamed. So here are my toxins getting released. Opening up communication. What is the matrix made of? Specific molecules that have been very carefully studied, collagen, the hyaluron ends, uh, the cytoskeletal elements, microtubules, microfilaments, microtrabeculae, actin, myosin, the nucleus, its fabric, the DNA and the histones, and the connectors, the integrins that go across the cell surface. Collagen actually forms crystalline arrangements in the body. Actually, it's a liquid crystal. This is fascinating from the biophysics perspective. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the world. It's the basic building block of all animals. It's a triple helix, as shown on the left. It's a semiconductor. This is what Dr. St. Gergi figured out a long time ago. And until recently, his discovery was ignored by science in general. So the living matrix system that extends throughout the body is a semiconducting electronic network. A lot of the remarkable things that happen in energy medicine is because it's one energetic circuit speaking to another. That is, the human hand speaking to the tissues, as in the hands-on therapies, or as in the devices that interact, interact with the body energetically. And when the energy in these crystals, and here we're talking about cell membranes, connective tissue, um, muscle is highly crystalline, the, pigment, the uh, rods and cones in the eye, and the arrangement of the microtubules in cilia, uh, in all of these systems, Frillick has described how when the energy level reaches a certain point, they begin to vibrate coherently. And this is an extremely interesting aspect of energetics and energy medicine. And in the lower left, you see the results coming from Germany, from Fritz Albert Popp and his acupuncture colleagues, who have found when you stimulate the acupuncture points, the meridians light up and they give off coherent biophotons. And they can be seen in with medical infrared imaging. This is opening up our study of the meridians. It's showing that they are real things that respond. And when you take away the stimulus, they go dark in a tenth of a second. Very interesting work. Electronic properties have been used to detect disease and disorder. This is old. Uh, Harold Saxon Burr found that the electric field um, on the skin surface near a tumor is different. It goes through a series of changes over a period of time. This was verified in uh, 1998 in a multi-center study. Um, exploring the use of measuring the electric field on the breast to determine if a uh, lump is cancerous or not. And it's, it works very successful. And here's a very successful device that interrogates the body. It's called the T-scan. And it's based on the discovery that the conductance of tumors is seven times higher than normal tissue at particular frequencies. This is frequency-specific conductance. And it's a very sensitive method that's being uh, reviewed by the FDA. And this principle of tissue-specific conductance is real 
and it's the basis for a number of technologies. So the matrix model is based on the real structure of cells. It allows for the generation, transfer, storage, and utilization of energy and information. The links across the cell surface allow for long-range interactions between cells and organs. It explains the uh, effects of many devices on biochemistry and cell behavior throughout the body, and it explains the diagnostic aspects and treatment aspects of many devices. And so this is, I hope you're getting the impression that this field is coming together around substantial science. It's the operating system of the body, I suggest. And don't be surprised by systemic effects with these devices. In other words, the patient comes in in one state, and in a matter of a few minutes, they go out in a totally different state. It's like um, resolving the software conflicts in a computer. It's like this. This very rapid shift. And, you know, one of the things that's fascinated me is why do some medical issues stump the best of us? What is going on there? Why are we puzzled? There is now an inflammation model of chronic disease. And when you think about it, pockets of inflammation may be located a distance away from where the problem is. So the patient has kidney problems. We don't realize that an injury years ago in the person's shoulder for example, has been encapsulated. Inflammation is a walling off. It's the body's defense system. It's encapsulated an area of tissue that may contain necrotic tissue that is slowly leaking toxins that slowly poison the liver. How would we find that? How would we ever know that? Well, that's where these energy medicine devices come in. They are able to not only find these hidden secret places where there are problems and they're able to correct them. And their science marches on. Another energetic matrix is the um, electromagnetic matrix around the body. Energy medicine has been used in diagnosis. Uh, the electrocardiogram we've had for 100 years, the electroencephalogram, the uh, electromyogram, these are used by many physicians. This is energy medicine diagnosis. And energy medicine has been used in therapeutics. Pulsing electromagnetic field therapy has been used for delayed union of fracture, which is defined as improper healing within six months, or fracture non-unions, failure of union after six months. And one of the underlying causes of these conditions is inflammation. In the early 80s, uh, Brighton, Bassett, and their colleagues at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons did a vast amount of work to demonstrate that you could stimulate healing in non-unions uh, using pulsing magnetic fields. Tiny electric fields will do the job very tiny. They have to be tiny. If they're too large, you get necrosis. He said this, and Bassett said this in his last paper before he died, jump-starting a car with a dead battery creates an operational machine. Exposure of a non-union to pulsing electromagnetic fields can convert a stalled healing process to active repair, even in patients uh, unhealed for as long as 40 years. And he mentioned that by 1995, most orthopedic surgeons had used this method at one time or another. Um, originally, they put pins in the bone and passed a current through it. Then they just realized they could induce current flow through the fracture site using coils, using magnetic fields, non-invasive. And then more recently, many orthopedic surgeons have gone back to electrical stimulation using implanted uh, stimulators. And this was so successful 
that people started to look at other tissues and they discovered that each tissue seems to respond to a different frequency. And this is part of the basis for various energy medicine devices. And here we're dealing with the laws of physics, which you may not violate without severe punishments. Uh, two, two laws are involved. Ampere's law, electricity gives rise to magnetism. So the electricity flowing through the coil will create a magnetic field, which penetrates into the tissue. And magnetism gives rise to electric currents. The magnetic field in the tissue um, stimulates a current flow through the tissue. So this is a basis for many devices. And I'm just going to skip through to my last slide because my time is up. And I have definitely enjoyed my time with you. But I have to get to my last slide because it's, it's important. Then the last bit is about the inflammation model. And the inflammation model is um, an energetic model. And I like this um, quote, which I'm getting to rapidly. Selye, Hans Selye. And this is from one of your colleagues. Physics precedes chemistry, retuning the body by re tuning the electrodynamic field can resolve chemical balance, restore chemical balance. So thank you very much. <laughs>